What's up guys, it's Toothcake, and this is going to be a let's play of the Dark Siders 2, just for the hell of it. Came out in kind of a weird spot, um, pretty much on the same day as Sleeping Dogs, um, kind of in that gap between the, uh, the release of the Dawnguard DLC for Skyrim, and also with Guild Wars 2 for a week later. I uh, would kind of like to see more from this franchise, but uh, not a whole lot. Uh, gonna probably come from that just because just of because of the ridiculous expectations that uh, THQ put on it. Um, so this is kind of an attempt to drive up uh, interest in the game. If not, just uh, show you guys how it's gonna go. This is gonna be a uh, my second playthrough of the game. I'm actually gonna do this on uh, New Game Plus. I try, or actually with a new save, I'm gonna be picking up uh, further entries as a New Game Plus. I uh, recorded a bunch of shit, and uh, for whatever reason, Steam did not decide to. Uh, Record the sound with it, so this is my way of getting around that. Now, oh, actually, no. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and stick with uh, apocalyptic, I think. There can be no life without order. Good, evil. Darkness, light, there must be balance in the universe. Such is the decree of the Charred Council, an ancient body charged by the Creator to preserve the very fabric of existence. But the balance has been broken. Even now, Earth smolders in ruin, fallen to the Demon Lords, and the Destroyer carves a new kingdom amongst his mighty chosen. Some say the Horseman War triggered the Apocalypse, that he rode to Earth unbidden and doomed all of mankind. But what of the other Horsemen, fearless enforcers of the Council's will? What of fury, strife, and death? To know those names, you must first know another. Nephilim, cursed union of angel and demon. The Nephilim had countless realms to serve and burned them to ash. But four amongst them grew weary of the slaughter and feared their conquest would imperil the balance. And so a truce was made. The four would serve the council in exchange for unimaginable power. Thus were the dreaded horsemen formed. And the rider's first task was to purge their own brethren from creation, to annihilate the Nephilim and destroy their souls. Let us now cast our gaze to one amongst the four. Not war, who lies chained at the Council's feet, professing his innocence. But one who would save his brother, above all else. He has many names. Kinslayer, Executioner, Death. swore that he would resurrect humanity. But he knew not how this might be done. And so death rode forth into the icy veil to find the keeper of secrets. So there you go. There's the uh, the opening cinematic that kind of gives some background on the, uh, the first game. You play in the first game, you play as War, um, framed as uh, for kicking off the apocalypse early. Um, and in the second game, you play as Death, just trying to go through and uh, prove your brother's innocence. Um, story alignment actually takes place in tandem. Uh, as mentioned, this is my second play through the game. The first one took about 18 hours um, on normal difficulty. Um, wasn't too bad. Um, 
overall, I'd say if you can get this game on sale, give it a rent, or even just uh, have any interest on it all, just go ahead and pick it up. Um, the only real complaint is, I'll go ahead and show you real quick, is that it's a pretty piss poor PC port. Um, as far as any uh, customization, as far as the graphics goes, as you can see, it's pretty much limited to the uh, the video resolution um, and nothing else. Uh, and yet, for the record, I am using the uh, Xbox 360 controller uh, just because I think that uh, this type of game is lend better to a little bit a uh, little bit more to the controller. Um, so PC Master Race can get off my dick. Um, now we're getting to kind of the tutorial uh, portions of the game. Um, one of the things that kind of surprised me is that despite the fact that uh, the traversal stuff is pretty rote for games like this, what with uh, Prince of Persia and stuff like that, um, with this they actually found a way, I thought, to, uh, to reinvigorate it. Um, it's actually uh, pretty fun and pretty clever with some of the stuff that they came up with. So, basic combat here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab this stuff while the, uh, the baddie's trying to get himself squared away. Um, very gear, uh, God of War-like, um, with uh, kind of a nod to uh, Devil May Cry as well, just with the uh, not as big a, uh, an emphasis on aerial combat, but you kind of got the combination of range and stuff like that. Um, it is a derivative game drawing from uh, a lot, one of the most popular comparisons, I think, is from the Legend of Zelda games. For me, that's not really apt. Um, if anything, I'd probably compare it to the uh, the Soul Reaver games, just because, uh, in my opinion, um, the Legend of Zelda games, it did have the, uh, the combination of combat and puzzle solving, but uh, it always felt like there was a little bit more emphasis on combat, where with this one... Um, it's uh, the emphasis swings more towards puzzles. But this level, it's not really a good example, just because it's a tutorial and you're trying to get uh, kind of acclimated to everything. But uh, in the later ones or the later levels, uh, it definitely swings more towards um, puzzles. Once again, just demonstrating some of the traversal. The uh, the voice actor who uh, voices the profile there, I think his name's Steve Blum, um, kind of annoys the crap out of me. I think his voice is pretty generic. Um, he's pretty uh, well known within the industry, but uh, I just I hate his performance in almost everything that he's in. Um, but thankfully, there are uh, some other voice actors. Uh, veterans here, one of the ones being uh, Simon Templeman from the uh, Licks of Cain games. Um, always a good bad guy. Um, and uh, not so much the uh, the main character here. He's voiced by the uh, the dude who did the villain in uh, The Crow. I forget his name exactly, but I think the villain uh, was Top Dollar or something like that. One of the biggest implementations uh, for Darksiders 2 over the first game is the uh, the loot system in addition to the character changes it themselves. Uh, you play a lot more nimble character than uh, you did in the first game. But uh, as you can see, just kind of slowly outfitting myself here with the uh, crap that we find on the ground from these skeletons um, as we're making our way to the uh, crow father. It's kind of weird playing this. Uh, back to start again, I was expecting to some new game plus like I did for the uh, the first cut of this video um, so I'm kind of missing a lot of the skills I was expecting to rely on before but NBD I guess Overall, I, uh, I enjoyed the game quite a bit. Um, in terms of the storing, uh, I think I liked the first game better just because it dealt more with like the uh, the Christian apocalypse, and you figure if you're playing as a horseman of apocalypse, that's what you're going to be focusing on. Um, but with this one, it's definitely uh, a 
better game in terms of the craft associated with it. Getting into our first mini boss here in the form of the Ice Giants. Um, just kind of demonstrating the timing and finesse associated with uh, dealing with the bigger bosses. There we go with the Reaper kill. Um, according to the devs, uh, this avatar here isn't actually Death's true form. It's that uh, that Reaper guy. Um, so occasionally you'll see him pop out with, in certain combat modes, also in uh, in cutscenes as far as the kill finishers, like we just saw. Um, sometimes though, uh, it gets to be there's a lot going on on screen. Um, it seems like it'd be a pretty good place for a uh, quick time event to. Uh, kind of slow things down and let you take in the scene a little bit more, but I can kind of applaud them for going a different way just because who isn't tired of uh, quick time events at this point. Um, but it definitely can be a little bit hard to follow, but uh, overall you get some pretty cool executions out of it. I think one of the big things they were going through and uh, just trying to stress with this series in general is just a sense of scale. Um, so it's a really actually a really cool art design. Um, very comic booky, which I guess makes sense considering one of the uh, founding dudes at Visual is a, uh, I believe a comic book artist, I could be wrong on that, but uh, you kind of get that hyper stylized uh, look on everything. Um, with the environments, I think a little bit more love went into it this time around, but uh, it's just kind of a shame that uh, the fidelity there that you're expecting for like a PC title um, kind of got left by the wayside. Um, just kind of demonstrate that real quick. Um, if you notice, the uh, the resolution on the death model on the inventory screen is actually pretty low. Um, that's probably one of my biggest pet peeves, um, just because it seems like such a simple thing to to miss out on. But uh, by all accounts, they're actually looking at fixing and stuff like that. Um, so as long as something comes out of it, I guess I can't complain too much. As I mentioned, uh, death is a lot more nimble than war was, um, which actually gives a nice flow, I think, to combat and also to movement. Um, granted, I haven't really spent too much time messing around with the uh, keyboard and mouse um, for the reasons uh, mentioned earlier, um, but at least on the controller, uh, there's a very, it's very smooth, very smooth and enjoyable. Your annoying voice. Your brother's fate. Because you know the truth, your secrets can save him. <laughs> the council will condemn war. 
Strip him of power, let him rot in oblivion. To hide the truth. My secrets cannot prove his innocence, horsemen. No, but they can help me to erase the crime. Bring mankind back from extinction. Madness. If it's madness, then who better to show me the way? Should a way exist, you will find it here. The Tree of Life. Let me pass. Not yet. That which you gave me, you will take it back. In exchange for its secrets, you agreed to keep the amulet. No. The voices, they curse and threaten without end. They cry to return. You must destroy it. I cannot. You annihilated their flesh. Why do you guard their souls? Open the portal. You will not pass while I live. So be it. Morse falling out, it's kind of a dick move to go through and uh, make the souls of your dead race hang out in a crystal for all eternity. Eternal torment. Do you wish to join them? And what of war? Would you kill your brother to save your precious balance? He is innocent. Are you so certain? Dun dun dun, boss fight. Alright, not only does this really serve us as a, uh, an end to the level, but it also kind of demonstrates the differences, I think, between war and death. Um, Kind of showing like, hey, you were playing a big swingy badass in uh, the first game. Now you're playing a dodgy choppy badass in the second game. Oh, there's a quick time event. Sort of. Close one. Uh, I wonder who won.
might be balanced with destruction. And in the final moment of battle, death was banished to one such world in the autumn of its life, yet not far from the edge of darkness. Had death been sent to his doom, that answer would be found in the horseman's future and in his past. God, I hate his voice. Be still, horseman. You are wounded. Don't touch me. Your arrival here is a bad omen. Yes, it troubles me greatly. Old one, there's more trouble ahead if you don't start making sense. Where is the tree of life? Life? <laughs> this world is dying, lad. Choking on chaos and corruption. We can do little to stop it. Soon, the great tree too shall perish, and with it, the last of my people. Is that not what brought you here, Pale Rider? I seek the tree. Your chaos and corruption don't concern me. well, but this corruption can't be beaten with a blade. Seek out the Forge sister. Ask her about the fire of the mountain. Help her, and she will help you reach the tree. As for me, I must return to my work. And who are you to command a rider? I am a maker, older than even the Charred Council. These hands have laid the foundations for many worlds. But that was long ago, and now they but hardly know the touch of stone. Are you not curious as to why I seek the tree? I would not presume to question one of the four, but yes, tell me. I must restore humanity to redeem war. Heaven and hell battle upon the shattered earth. All creation trembles. And at the center of it all stands your brother. He is innocent. I never said he wasn't. The tree holds power over life and death. If you would resurrect humanity, then you are headed in the right direction. Be warned. A dark presence dwells now within the tree. And the path is barred by corruption. <laughs> Alright. Now that brings us to the first official level of the game. Um, but, and kind of a rant, which I will cover in a moment. Um, these are the makers. Uh, obviously kind of laid out a little bit. God damn it. Um, so just big, burly Scottish dudes. Jesus Christ with the tutorials. Um, and, uh, in the first game, they felt really tacked on. Uh, it's not too bad when the actual, like, voice actor is Scottish, like this dude. Uh, I believe that is, uh... Lord Commander Mormont from uh, the Game of Thrones series, um, but the, for the most part, it's just cheesy Scottish accents. Um, and uh, once again, you know, you're kind of looking at the fact that you're uh, Horseman of the Apocalypse. You're kind of expecting to focus on the uh, the Christian Apocalypse. Um, whereas with this, it's kind of like Death Goes to the Ren Fair. Um, so kind of lame in my opinion, um, but uh, it does have a cool boss fight at the end. So with this, uh, kind of getting gonna get the overall experience as well as the uh, the first um, taste of town hubs and uh, and whatnot. Um, there are four levels uh, to this game, four worlds rather. Um, each one gets progressively shorter, but this is definitely the uh, the largest and the uh, the most um, varied in terms of stuff that you can do. Um, speaking to that a little bit. Uh, with the press that was coming out with the game, 
prior to its release, um, the the developers were laying out how uh, you know there was tons and tons of content that you could do, um, and uh, we're looking at like literally like 40 hours or something was I think was the quote. Um, and granted, there are side quests and junk, but nothing that I really ran into, with the exception of maybe like two or three quests, uh, really met that promise of scale. Um, it seems like most of the length was actually padded by collectible quests, which, don't know about you guys, but for me, uh, I think collectible quests are bullshit, um, just in terms of like having to go out and find something in the world um, in a really dumb way to actually go through and uh, add to the length. Um, so for the the scale of this playthrough, um, I'll probably go through and do what I can in terms of the side quests and maybe uh, two or three of the ones that are out of the way. Um, but for the most part, I'm maybe sticking with the narrative. Hmm. The Reaper. It's about time you came. The Makers are dying, and our realm. We few are all that remain. A warrior's life is never easy, old one. Aye, not easy, but simple. I always saw my end with blade in hand, a field of enemy dead before me. And what glorious end awaits you hiding behind these gates? Uh, you cannot fight corruption, nor can you harm it. You can only kill those it has claimed. Every blow I strike against corruption is a blow against my own people. Muse on that, Ryder, before you mark me as a coward. Let's go and train up a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just grab one of the. Uh, actually, check out this uh, gifts thing. <gasps> yeah, just pre ordered stuff. Neither of which I'm high enough level use. Sweet. Maker's beard. The rumors are true. A horseman in the Forge Lands. The name's Alia, and that's my brother Valis. We are the keepers of this forge. Though I reckon that means less now than once it did. This is a Maker's Forge? Nay, the Maker's Forge is lost to us. Silenced by the hands of corruption, but in its depths we once crafted the dark towers of hell and the cities of heaven. Now you make trinkets? <laughs> and you, one of the four, now seek the aid of the makers? I guess we've all fallen from high places. Kane is seeking the tree and your elder speaks of fire. What is it? Aye, the fire of the mountain, the Stonefather's blood. It once flowed into our forge, as did the tears. Both imbued our craft with incredible power, the heart and the soul of stone. But corruption has taken them, and now our forge is silent. Why does this concern me? The way to the tree is lost, barred by corruption. You can no more leave this place than we. Restore our forge, and the tree can be reached. I don't follow your reasoning. We are makers. Not warriors, but we are not without our Never weapons. Never mind that big guy with the Before axe the that I just lost, we crafted a tried to fight. Creature of soul and stone, a colossus to fight this corruption. But to awaken him requires a maker's key, and we need our forge to craft one. Will you help us? What is this cauldron? A temple built in the shadow of Stonefather's Peak. There, the fire of the mountain was harnessed and passed into our forge. Ride east of town, ride through the Charred Pass, and towards the cindery peak of the Stone Father. There, you will find the cauldron. Man of no words, your brother. <laughs> but hardly silent. His voice is the ring of the hammer and the roar of the white flame. Yes, he works while you talk. I may have need of a blade. Is your need greater than ours, horseman? I think not. We fight for the survival of our realm and our kin. Prove worthy, and mayhaps we can do business. Alright, I'm just gonna go ahead and talk to one more person just to pick up a uh, side quest that we'll be able to complete.
We've been awaiting your arrival, horsemen. Your shadows and have all hovered over this realm. Many know the Reaper, old one, but I don't know you. We are the builders of this world, but corruption seethes at its heart and destroys in days what we shaped over eons. Adar does his best to soothe our pain, but our souls yearn for only one comfort. Death. We are without hope. Tell me, shaman, what is corruption? I only know what I fear it to be. That corruption is hate given life, and that hate does not come from trees or stones, but from ourselves. You despair, old one, and yet raise life from the earth. I am a shaman, bound to this task even as our days darken. We are as the vines, coming to root, then to flower, and then to decay, dropping seeds upon the dust, a circle everlasting. I cannot stop it, nor can I stop you. Tell me more about the Tree of Life. The forest around the tree has been corrupted. It hungers. You cannot reach the tree, not with breath still in you. Not all quests are left unfinished. A gift for you, in honor of all your brother has accomplished. That's nah, just something for completing the first game. Horseman, do you ever doubt your future? No. So one like yourself would set out to change a fate that displeases him. That is a long and dangerous path, even for death himself. How is that your concern, Shaman? Only that I am skilled at crafting talismans. If you gather the proper materials and return them to me, I'll make a potent talisman to aid you on your journey. What do you require? Stalker's bone, mordant dew, and carven stone. It is not a simple charm. Where can I find them? Somewhere in the Forge Lands. I rarely leave Tristone, but that pup Khan is always out exploring. He can tell you more, no doubt. Just gonna grab what a couple was of, uh, it's new again. health potions. One health potion, because that's all I can afford. Yeah, I do like the out art style, but that body type is really fucking confusing. Gonna actually, uh, in order to like let people get a better sense of the lore and the story, I'm just gonna actually uh, keep the conversations rolling uh, without skipping them. Um, if it's one of those things where people it's people start to hate it, just let me know. Um, and I'll skip it and focus on the action bits. Straight up Zelda game. Beating up pots for loot. <coughs> Horseman, you'll find not that way, but trouble. Do what you must for your kin, old one. For mine, I ride to the cauldron. Well, if you fancy your corruption waist deep, that's as good a place as any. You know, there's a reason this gate is here. And if you were a friend, I wouldn't have let you pass. But then, <laughs> who is friend to death? Have you Thanks, to Dick. Share, or was it long since not loose in battle? Oh, wisdom ain't like teeth. I've plenty left. Enough to stay clear of the colder. The ancients filled it with right nasty traps. But one so clever as yourself will surely elude them. Just open the gate, asshole. And we'll talk to you. The fire really don't understand what's up with the, the tassels there. Is that his hair? Should make haste to the temple. Fire alone it's confusing. You speak of the forge. Aye. Without the fire and the tears of the mountain, without the forge itself, we have no means to clear the forest and reach the tree of life. What then? Our power is over creation, yours over death and despair. You are Nephilim, lord of destruction. Perhaps in that there is hope. Just how old is the forge? It is as ancient as the realm itself, and perhaps even older. It is said the forge was the first thing we makers built, that in its depths we shaped entire worlds. Anyway, on with the show.
Hey there, tentacle monster. You've got a sexy eye. Might speed this up since there's not a whole lot going on with the the, uh, the ride, but or I can find something else to talk about. I've kind of gotten a taste of the uh, the looting system so far. Um, once uh, I actually get to where I'm going, um, level up a little bit. I'll explain the uh, the level up system in a little bit more detail. Um, but suffice to say, you do have uh, different stats on different items. So you can, there's quite a bit of customization in terms of what you can do. Um, but at least at the level I was playing before, not a whole lot of it made any difference. Because uh, you're still looking for uh, I don't know, just gear that, uh, that is essentially better in defense than what you had already. Um, there's uh, junk like uh, that steals life, which, depending on what weapons it applied to, um, the primary weapon is always going to be a scythe, but for a secondary weapon, um, kind of got a couple of different experiences about the stuff that you can have, like the the hammer and the axe back when uh, first started the game. But you can get other things, um, faster weapons like uh, claws or fists or stuff like that. Um, and depending on what type of status effect that you have applied to those, it can actually be quite overpowered. Um, for example, if you got like a uh, a fist weapon with um, I don't know, steel life on it. Uh, you can go through an attack fast enough um, that even if you take damage, uh, you can get back up to hel full health, really with the uh, minimal amount of effort. Yeah, that's a there we go. Alright, this does look like it's better than what we have. One of the things I'm kind of thankful for is that you get your horse right at the beginning of the game, um, which makes travel a lot more, uh, I don't know, easier, not as much pain in the ass. In the first game, uh, you were like getting it halfway through, so you are kind of down to uh, um, running everywhere. Yeah, you're still running on a horse, but it uh, goes a little bit faster. Figure out how to get up there. <laughs> that was kind of worth the climb, I guess. Seems like since we're looking for lava, the volcano is where we want to go, so we're kind of getting close here. Um, in terms of the variety of the environments, this one I think definitely does a better job than uh, some of the other worlds. Um, in terms of an actual like open world uh, experience, uh, it's really the, only the first two levels that you kind of give that. Um, the last two are very much structured, um, and uh, not a whole lot to them. Might as well duck it in and grab this chest while we're here. If I can make that. Yeah, here we go. Guess that uh, that other climb wasn't worth it. This is no place for a horse.
Alright, coming up on in here. Yeah, looks like we got a fight on. Okay, another health push. Combat does take some getting used to in terms of the timing. Um, I'm not that really that big into uh, to Twitch action games. Um, like uh, Ninja Guy didn't definitely cry. Um, so, it might be uh, a little easier for other people to pick up. Not another one. You're the Nephilim, the one they call Death. How did you get here? Took a wrong turn. It appears I'm stranded here with the rest of you. If you seek the cauldron, you should know that it fell to corruption fair long ago. I can still feel the fire itself rumbling deep in the earth. I'll take my chances. No different than the others. Less pleasant on the eyes, for one. <laughs> I could say no less Wearing a mask, dick. Folks around town call me Pup or Lad. But I prefer my own name. Carl. Pup it is, then. As you will. Matters not to me. Why not restore the fire yourself? I came here just for that purpose. Figured I'd pop the cork, so to speak. Be the hero. But the cauldron is locked up well and tight. And the way through is swallowed by fire. You look capable enough. Perhaps you can find a way. Yeah, this one of the dudes I'll we gotta talk about for the talisman. The Your shaman has offered me a talisman if I bring her the materials. You'd be wise to accept then. Her craft is mighty powerful. Where do I find Stalker's bone? You'll find stalkers prowling the cauldron. Should be simple work if your name is any indication. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, back to combat. The only thing that's really weird to me um, is that you have a uh, <clears throat> a lot of combo attacks, but not a whole lot of them actually stagger your opponents. So there's nothing to say, uh, I don't know, like you're three buttons into a uh, four-button combo. Nothing to keep a uh, an enemy from just coming out and wailing on you for that last... Um, button. So it's kind of annoying just because it means you have to dodge out of the way um, and otherwise do something to break that combo. Um, but overall, uh, it is it is fun um, and it's pretty satisfying once you get to the higher tiers. Um, one of the things though, I didn't find it a whole hell of a lot of, uh, of difficulty there. Um, with the exception of one boss fight, the most of the uh, difficulty for me actually came in with puzzles. Um, you know, granted, uh, my experience may not be typical of everyone, um, and, uh, you know, for the most part, they're actually pretty straightforward and easy, but, uh, there are a couple of there that, uh, that are head scratchers, um, because they're actually clever, and others still that are head scratchers because they aren't designed too well. Bomb flowers, I mean shadow what the hell are these things called? Shadow bombs, whatever. But they're bomb flowers. I believe that's not as good as what we have. Once again, focusing on the traversal. With this one, um, you don't have a whole lot of, uh, of special abilities yet in terms of uh, stuff to help you out with dungeons. Um, it still comes down, down to just the straight wall running, uh, strafing kind of junk like that. Um, but as you get further on, um, they really do become uh, 
a lot more fun and a lot more challenging. Um, the traversal, as stated earlier, is something that was kind of surprising in terms of uh, just how uh, interesting some of the uh, actual jumpy bits were made, um, which was, in my opinion, good to see. Uh, just because, you know, if you're looking at your Prince of Persia's or whatever, um, it's actually one of the things I found in reviews that people were going through and saying, there's a lot here, but uh, none of it was done particularly well. And at least from my case, I played uh, all of the uh, the Prince of Persia's games, um, including the last one, even though the uh, the last one wasn't played to completion. Um, whatever the hell the one was. The, uh, the Nolan North Prince of Persia. Uh, but, uh, you know, I... There were some of these that uh, I felt were either on par or, or better than um, some of the jumpy bits in Prince of Persia. So, take that wood as you will. Stop dodging into them. That really doesn't help as far as avoiding damage. There we go. Oh, you son of a bitch. That was kind of cheesy, but thankfully it's not an instant death. He just reapers out and gets back up here. <clears throat> And here we are with... I wonder what this could be. Possibly the key? Possibly something else? I don't care, I'm gonna destroy the chest anyway. Dungeon map. That must be our stalker hunter thing. Dodging into him. It's not a good way to go. Alright. Whoa. Okay. Already got a uh, possessed weapon. Possessed weapons, as you will see. Go through and kill two birds with one stone. Um, you can go through and feed them other weapons. Um, like if you want to go through and get a certain trait. This is what I was talking about earlier with like uh, going through and giving something um, life stealing. If you go through and consistently feed this thing, uh, life stealing gear, um, essentially, uh, eventually rather, you will go through and get a, uh, a life steal bonus on that scythe. So you can kind of customize your weapons, um, to the type of style that you have. Um, so more just with the, uh, the level up screen now. We've got Harbinger and Necromancer. Necromancer, exactly like it sounds. You can go through and summon up different types of pets. Uh, my main save is, uh, Necromancer. Uh, which you'll see a little bit more through further playthroughs. So with this one, I'm actually going to focus on uh, Harbinger. Or Harbinger. Yeah, it's a confusing word to say sometimes. Fucking tutorials. Fuck off. Alright, there is our Skeleton King, so I'll go back and open up the door now. Yep, as the tooltip is saying, it's kind of cool. Um, you can summon up your Raven, who will give you hints on uh, how to proceed through the dungeon. Um, no, it's not a Raven, it's a Crow, which is kind of funny, considering the uh, the actor that voices Death was uh, a villain in The Crow. Not really funny, uh, or ironic, but whatever. Good joke. And one of the things that I like as well, um, do you notice that, uh, at least as far as the trek back, it was designed uh, to be easily traversable? Um, so you don't have a whole hell of a lot of backtracking um, in the exact way that you came, uh, which is kind of nice just because uh, it's kind of a bitch to 
God damn it. Um, go through and, you know, just run along some arbitrary path in order to, uh, to progress on. Now we're on a rolly puzzles. I actually kind of like these just because of the, I think, with the physics associated with the ball. Kind of this stupid, silly thing, but whatever. Again, the inaccuracies associated with the controller. Bring the ring to the fires of Mount Doom. <gasps> oh, you dick. Okay, so locked door here, unlocked door over here. I wonder which way we're supposed to go. Figure, gotta take this. It's three spots on the ground, and there's a ball under the other grate over there. So push that in here so we can get the second ball, and then uh, complete the puzzle. I don't get hit by well, falling rocks first. Okay, um, I kind of blew past that uh, tool tip because I'd seen it already, but uh, what it essentially said is you can use shadow bombs to dislodge the orbs from their nests, like so. So, take this over here, drop it in its cradle, and grab the key. Run to bar. I see a piece of loot over there. Yes, I know, there's a bunch of sparklies that I'm going through and skipping by. 
Those are actually boatsman's coins, which uh, I'll explain probably in a, another video. Just because at this point they're not going to get a whole lot of use out of them. I want to bet that this is timed. If I remember right. Yeah, it's gotta be timed. Time is obvious. Yeah, nice of them to give me a warning. Motherfucker. <gasps> nice of them to build their uh, cauldrons with handholds. Is that a cauldron or is it a crucible? I don't know what the hell the thing that holds molten. Lava, iron, steel. We need lighting through here. Come on, camera, keep up. I'm gonna forego getting that chest down below us, down there, just because I don't really care that much. Rise, Chica. Once again, we get a uh, a mini boss. He's, in my opinion, these kind of stay overstay their welcome a little bit, but uh, we do, I guess, kind of keep the uh, the sense of scale, make everything suitably epic. It's just you see them quite a bit, and it, uh, there's not a whole lot of variation in how to defeat them, which is kind of disappointing. You know, it really is just dodge and smack. Special attacks in this are powered by Wrath, which is the uh, little blue bar below my health. I actually regain that by uh, attacking normally. I'm taking damage here because I'm getting impatient. Our dick. <clears throat> Die. There we go. Yeah, maybe it's just me, but again, that still comes down to something where it's kind of hard to see. Um, you know, it's possible just because of all the color differences. I think that's probably the. Uh, most likely. Or I'm just getting old. <laughs> well, not really hard to see, but kind of hard to follow. Whatever. Hopefully you know what I mean. Another hammer. Should probably equip that one, but we're just about done here anyway. And now we're popping the top on the heart of the mountain. Heart of fire, stun the mountain, fire the mountain, whatever the fuck we're doing. The lava pit. Mm -hmm. 
And that, as they say, is that. I'm going to go ahead and close out this video by saying thank you for watching. Um, any continuation in this series is probably just going to be based on the, uh, the amount of interest rather, that uh, comes out of it. So I don't really want to go into the like, favorite, subscribe spiel, but like, favorite, subscribe. These are kind of time-consuming to make. Um, but tune in next time as we go after the Tears of the Mountain um, on my actual character. Um, and thank you again for watching.